in the headlines. Mixed reactions trail Muslim Muslim ticket as Kashim Shatima emerges as Tinubu running mates. Colorful cultural display as Jagawa holds Daba to mark Idol Kabir. Manufacturers seek license to import diesel as cost increases. And on the foreign scene, Portugal deploys 3,000 firefighters to battle heat wave blazes. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. <music> We begin with politics, where reactions are trailing the emergence of Senator Kashem Shatima as Bola Tinubu's running mate for the 2023 general elections. The spokesperson for the Christian Association of Nigeria, Adebayo Ladeji, says a Muslim Muslim ticket in polarized country is wrong and insensitive. Also speaking, former Secretary General of Arewa Consultative Forum, Anthony Sani, has said the choice of APC to present a Muslim Muslim ticket will further divide Nigeria rather than uniting the nation. Similarly, Minister of State for Labour and Employment Festus Kiyama has described Senator Kashim Shatima as a worthy choice of a running mate for Chief Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Tinubu, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, had on Sunday announced after a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari in Daura, Katsina State, that he would be running the 2023 race with Shatima. Speaking to newsmen after his closed store meeting with the president, Tinubu said Shatima was elected because the former Borno State governor is competent, capable, reliable, and able to be picked as a running mate. Reacting to the development, Mr. Kiyama was of the opinion that Tinubu had made a great choice. The minister who aired his view on Twitter described Shatima as a quintessential banker and economist, suave gentleman and politician who is intellectually fertile and economically sound. Following the nomination of former Borno Governor Kashim Shatima as running mate to APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu and the mixed reactions generated, especially in the area of his religious standing, Trust TV's Nana Muhammad gives us an up and close and personal look at the man Kashim Shatima. Senator Kashim Shetima was born in Meduguri, Borno State on 2nd September 1966 to the family of Sir Kashim Ibrahim. Senator Kashim attended Lamisla Primary School in Meduguri from 1972 to 1978, Government Community Secondary School built in southern parts of Borno State from 1978 to 1980, transferred to Government Science Secondary School Potiskum now in neighboring Yobi State, where he completed his secondary education in 1983. He studied at the University of Medugri and earned a degree in agricultural economics in 1989. He obtained a master's degree in agricultural economics in 1991 at the University of Ibadan in southwest Nigeria. Shetima joined the University of Medugri as a lecturer with the Department of Agricultural Economics and was in the academia from 1991 to 1993. In 1993, he moved into the banking sector. In 2007, Kashim was appointed as the Commissioner for Finance in Borno State. He later contested the governorship in 2011, which he won under the platform of the now defunct All Nigerian People's Party, ANPP. He won the re-election in 2015 under the All Progressives Congress, APC, and was chosen as chairman of the Northern States Governors Forum, an umbrella body of governors in the 19 states located in northern Nigeria. In February 2019, he became the winner of the Borno Central Senatorial District election, thereby replacing Senator Baba Kaka Bashir. Senator Shetima is a current serving senator under the platform of APC. Nan Muhammad, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Inspector General of Police, Usman al Baba, has deployed senior police officers for the July 16 governorship elections in Oshun State, promising tight security for the exercise. Force Public Relations Officer Olumuiwa Dejobi 
disclosed this in a statement issued on Sunday, saying that the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of the Force Criminal Investigation Department, DIG Johnson Babatunde Kokumo, will supervise the election. To assist Kokumo are four Assistant Inspectors General of Police, four Commissioners of Police, 15 Deputy Commissioners of Police, and 30 Assistant Commissioners of Police. The IGP further noted that the personnel comprising conventional police officers, police mobile force, counter-terrorism unit, special forces personnel, explosives ordnance disposal unit, force intelligence bureau, Interpol, special protection unit, police air wing, public relations department, as well as police medical teams will be on ground to guarantee free, fair, credible and acceptable election. In politics, the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar is set to return from his foreign trip to nip in the bud the crisis bedeviling the party over a choice of his running mate. The party is expected to leverage on the committee set up by its board of trustees chairman, Senator Wale Jibrin, which had Atiku as chairman to bring together the stakeholders towards resolving the contentious issue. Also following the poor turnout of party bigwigs during the inauguration of the Ocean State uh, Governorship Campaign Council, where only two of the 12 governors on the party's platform attended, Atiku is expected to lead the charge to ensure PDP's victory in the state. As part of this year's Sala celebration, hundreds of horse riders in Jigawa have held a street display to mark the annual Daba festival. From the state capital, Duse, Trust TV's Idris Dibrin reports that the Daba symbolizes peace, unity, and a sustainable relationship between the people, the government, and the traditional institutions. The report. <laughs> Firing of Dane guns by the Emir's Royal Guard heralds the arrival of the Emir of Dusi, Al Haji Nuh Muhammad, his district heads, and other traditional title holders. It is called Hawang Gomneti, a traditional Doba entertainment, a presentation of tradition and cultures based in Dusi. In Hawang Gomneti, the Emir marched out his troops from the palace to the streets of Dusi to receive homage from the people, and thereafter, to the state government house where the emir pays homage to the governor there is no doubt that nigeria is in a state of insecurity and here in duse we have been telling people to watch over their neighbors to make sure that they protect each other your excellency i want to extend our gratitude for you and all other security agencies who have been playing significant role in ensuring the protection of lives and property here in Dusi and Jigawa State in general. We want to assure you that the Emirate will continue to cooperate with you in ensuring adequate protection of lives and property of our people. Your Highness, we are fully aware of the immense contribution of the Emirates, the good advices you are giving us on how to manage the state and how to move the state forward. His Excellency is highly grateful and I can assure you that this administration will continue to do its best in protecting the lives and property of the people here in Dusi and Jigawa State in general. For the people of Dusi Emirates, the Daba is significant for obvious reasons. First, it re-emphasizes the significance of their culture and tradition. It is also an opportunity to meet with their Emir and other traditional title holders in the kingdom. <laughs> Hawang Gomneti is only a segment of the Dabas as the celebration continues. So the Daba in Dusi. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Dusi.
still on the festivities as many who live below poverty line struggle to enjoy Eid al-Adha celebrations amidst rising cost of living. The story of a mother of six who lives in an uncompleted apartment in Abuja should inspire others who face similar challenges to rise up and embrace petty business in order to defy the odds. Trustee Ibis Shafi'u Suleiman reports. She is simply identified as Maman Hassana, a mother of six kids. She, her husband and children live in this uncompleted apartment for 10 years now. We have been living here for 10 years precisely. My husband is looking after the building. We have six kids. We thank God for this salary because it is heat free for us. No one is supporting us financially, but we feed, clothe, and send our children to school. Though her husband is not strong financially, she takes the challenge by engaging in food vending to take care of their children's education, clothing, and other needs. We are managing our lives here. You know living in Abuja is not easy. While many people living below poverty line are finding it difficult to meet their family salah demands, Mama Hasana is able to do a lot for her family. Beyond sacrificing Ram is enjoined by the scripture. She is able to sew a new set of clothes for her kids. She has a word for women who are fond of not appreciating their husbands. That's lack of appreciating God. I advise my fellow women to always thank God and thank their husbands no matter the circumstances. Even without a decent accommodation for her family, she remains contented with life in the circumstance. This is about to change, however as the owner of the building appeared interested in developing it further, 10 years later. This may alter the little joy out of her family. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Religious sacrifice and leather industry. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. We told you that mixed reactions trail Muslim Muslim ticket as Kashim Shatima emerges as Tinubu's running mate. You also heard that colorful cultural display as Jagawa holds Daba to Mac Idol Kabir. Moving to more stories, aside the two rakat prayers, one of the high points of Eid al-Kabir is the sacrifice of animals by the Muslim faithfuls. Beyond the fulfillment of that religious obligation of eating and sharing of meat is the increased production of hides and skin for local and international leather industries. Abdullahi Yamadi takes a look at hides and skin industry and how it is affected by the economic downturn. <laughs> The heights and skin business hitherto contributed a large percentage of Nigeria's gross domestic product, GDP. The industry continued to thrive until the beginning of the exploration of oil. And then, for some reasons, the global prices of heights and skin started to decline. Despite the declining fortunes of the sector, 
It remains the primary ingredient used by the leather industry in Nigeria and around the world in the production of bags, shoes, belts and other accessories. Our major concern is lack of enough capital. The foreign merchants manipulate the business because they have money more than the local lot dealers. The insecurity situation is affecting the business. The reason is that people have insignificant number of animals due to activities of bandits who wrestle the animals. It is globally accepted that huge tons of hides and skin are produced during the annual sacrifices of the Edel Cabero. The product is not only used locally, but makes its way as far as Lebanon, China, and across Europe. This is why it is puzzling that the price of hides and skin has continued to depreciate over time. Indeed, foreign merchants have manipulated and took over the business. This monopoly in hides and skin industry is not helping local dealers. Look at this scenario. The foreign merchants determine the price. Gainers are losers in the business. In spite of numerous challenges, the hides and skin sector remains one of the biggest employers of labor. One of those challenges is the manner in which foreign merchants have hijacked the entire value chain of the industry and can cut away the products at a giveaway prices. With local dealers unprotected against that practices of these merchants, many are often left struggling with lots of debts and eventual bankruptcy. Hundreds of thousands of hides and skin are produced in Katsina State annually, but the major beneficiaries are foreign merchants. Indeed, that may be the reason why stakeholders are calling for government's intervention to protect local dealers from manipulative economic practices. This is the only way to save the sector from imminent collapse. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Katana. The Federal Commissioner of the National Population Commission in charge of Kogi State, Professor Isa Habibat Jimo, has said that the 2023 population and housing census exercise may be devoid of manipulation because it would be centered on digital capturing, not manual. Jima, who disclosed this at the weekend, said the era where politicians and other interest groups would manipulate the exercise and record wrong results is over. He said the 2023 census exercise will be different, saying once an individual is captured by the machine, it goes directly to the center cyber at the headquarters and there is no way anybody can change the information as recorded. While he stressed that the staff of the commission have been adequately motivated to that effect, he said that people that it will make them minimize being corrupted by host people, communities and politicians. On crime, attempt by a human trafficker Matthew Bassi to export illicit drugs to Dubai, United Arab Emirates, by planting same in the luggage of an orphan, uh, Miss Peter Gift Eno, recruited for a phantom job in the Arab nation, has been thwarted by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Here's a recap of the agency's activity in the last week. When Eno's luggage was searched, 50 parcels of cannabis concealed in food items were discovered while there were discrepancies between the age she declared and the date of birth on her international passport. Investigations show that the victim, who hails from the same local government area, recently lost her mother and as a result made it easy for Basi to recruit her with the promise of securing her a job in Dubai. In a related development, the desperate bid by drug trafficker Aloysius Ajuruchuku Onyekwe to travel by road to Algeria through Sokoto State with ingested 47 wraps of cocaine in his stomach has been frustrated by NDLE operatives who intercepted him in a Badong or your state. A six year old Onyekwe was arrested on Sunday, 3rd July at Ojo Park, Ibadan, 
where he went to board a vehicle en route to Tokoto to Algeria. The father of a 10-month-old child who passed out the 47 pellets of cocaine in five excretions confessed that he began his journey to Algeria from Sele area of Okota, Lagos, where he ingested the illicit drug weighing 1.1 kilograms. Also in Oyo State, no fewer than 1,900 tablets of tramadol, 225 milligram, were seized from a drug dealer, Mustafa Ijibula, 22 years of age, who was arrested in Yola, a bound commercial vehicle stopped for routine search along Lagos Ibadan Expressway. This drug dealer, Beauty Dauda, 27 years of age, has been arrested with various quantities of meth, heroin, cannabis, and crack cocaine in a densely populated slum along Lagos Bypass, Benin City. She was arrested on Wednesday, 6 July, after NDLA operatives were able to break through the ring of protection often provided her by hoodlums and touts in the area. The chairman, chief executive officer of the National Drug Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Mohammed Buba Marwa, retired, has commended the officers and men of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Oyo, Akwaibom, and Edo commands of the agency for staying vigilant and proactive in their areas of responsibility. A statement from the Director of Media and Advocacy, Femi Baba Femi, says the DG charged them and their colleagues across the country not to rest on their oars until the war against illicit drug is won. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the remand of billionaire businessman Ukatu Afame Funa Malinson, who was linked to the suspended Deputy Superintendent of Police Abakari's alleged three billion naira drug deal. Justice Peter Lifu reminded Ukatu, alongside one of his co-defendants, Sunday Ifanyi Ibekute. Both defendants pleaded not guilty to the charge of conspiracy, trafficking in 322 kilograms of tramadol, as well as unlawful dealing and possession of the said banned drug allegations preferred against them by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. In the charge, the NDLEA alleged that Malinson Ibekute and Juan Pius Enidom, who is set to have jumped bail, conspired on May 4, 2021 amongst themselves to traffic and were in unlawful possession of 322 kilograms of tramadol. In business, Group Managing Director of the Nigerian Petroleum National Petroleum Corporation, Mele Kari, says they are working to resolve issues around the supply disruption of premium motor spirit, otherwise known as petrol. Kari, who disclosed this to newsmen in Daurakat's inner state after he paid Salah homage to President Muhammad Buhari, added that fuel scarcity will be tackled in a couple of days. On the cost of petrol, he said the NNPC is working to resolve the logistics cost to ensure that the price of the product is stabilized in the nearest future. Yes, first, uh, there's no question around it. Mr. President has uh, exercised his discretion and the right decision to increase the cost of transportation by 10 naira. That means that transporters will be able to take product from any fuel station, uh, from any depot, and take it to the furthest fuel station without any fence. We also acknowledge that there are some pressing logistic challenges, particularly in the marine, and we are resol resolving those, but particularly so that uh, we are convinced that these prices will normalize uh, very soon. Members of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria have decried the over 20% increase in the price of diesel while calling on the federal government to urgently allow them and the independent petroleum products marketing companies import the product from the public or Republic of Niger and Chad. Director General of MAN, Shergun Ajayi Kadiri, in a statement, expressed concern over the implications of the sharp increase in the price of diesel on the manufacturing sector. According to him, the current increase in prices of crude oil and other refined petroleum products is one of the backlashes from the ongoing invasion of Ukraine by Russia. The manufacturers who are heavy users of electricity have also asked the government to remove VAT on diesel as an instant stimulus for an immediate reduction in price and expedite action in reactivating or privatizing the petroleum products refineries in the country. 
Away from Nigeria, wildfires are sweeping across northern and central Portugal, where an estimated 3,000 firefighters and more than 60 aircraft are battling to quell the flames amid scorching temperatures. Portuguese authorities have announced a state of contingency as at least 29 people have suffered minor injuries from fires. The European Union Crisis Commissioner, Janez Lenersik, said the UN has activated its firefighting air fleet assistance program that allows member nations to share resources. Spain, which has also endured wildfires recently, quickly responded by mobilizing two firefighting planes to send to its Iberian neighbor. The EU says climate change has the continent facing one of its hardest years for natural disasters such as droughts and wildfires. And finally, in sports, Elena Rybakina became the first player from Kazakhstan to win a Grand Slam title by beating Tunisian third seed on Jabeur in a gripping Wimbledon final. Rybakina fought back to win 3-6, 6-2, 6-2 and becomes the youngest Wimbledon singles champion since 2011. After a shaky first set, she improved and pressured Jabeur into errors. Rebekina was born in Moscow and her victory comes in a year where Wimbledon banned Russians from playing. The All England Club did not allow Russian and Belarusian players to compete as this, at this year's tournament in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.